Hi, welcome to Soul Trader Diaries. I was literally just looking on the internet to see if I could use the uh, the name Soul Trader Diaries for my vlogs. Um, this is my first vlog, and it's based around not necessarily being a soul trader, but maybe being a, a, um, the sole person in a business. I mean, it could be that there's a couple of people in your business, but you're the main person, you're the one dealing with it, or you're the one taking the work home with you at night, and basically you have all, you're the one with all the worry. So um, this is really for anybody that's maybe a sole trader, solopreneur, limited company, but working by yourself. Um, going to talk about some of the struggles, hopefully some of the highs, some of the... Um, some of the lows, there is a lot of lows and a lot of people um, glamorise being a sole trader. And it isn't, it isn't all glamorous, there is rewards, but there is also a lot of struggle as well. And uh, sometimes we need to talk about that to understand it and you know, may, maybe overcome it and learn from it, move forward and, and keep growing, if that's what you wanna do. Um, in my case, I'm one of one one of the few people I don't I don't want to grow. I really am trying to stabilise my business. I'm struggling at the point at the moment that I have too much work, and I've already scaled my business back once from a VAT registered limited company to being a non VAT registered sole trader. Now this year I've gone and passed the uh, threshold for VAT and I should have registered for VAT but I totally overlooked that so there's something I've got to sort out but um, I've got a list of things that I'm, I'm going to talk about in some videos and if anybody watches this video or has any comments or anything they'd like to talk about leave it in some comments that would be great we'll talk about that I'm open to discussion um, You'll have to forgive me, I have a list of things I want to talk about because I have so many things going through my mind that it's very hard to stay focused on just that. So if you see me uh, looking down occasionally, I'm going through my list. I am also what's now called a multi-potentialite, which means I'm one of these people with an overactive mind. I am a problem solver but I'm always coming up with ideas always looking to do something new to the point that maybe I never start stuff or to the point that I start lots and lots of things but can never manage to finish things um, it's an interesting phrase have a look it up it's called multi potentialite a lot of people may find that you are a multi potentialite and you didn't even realize there was a name for yourself it is interesting so I've got my little list here about what I'm gonna do and I've written down on this one hi and welcome to the Soul Trader Diaries in this first vlog I want to talk about what it's really like to be a sole trader or what it means to be a sole trader um, for me when I started my business I, I knew nothing about business and I still think I don't really know anything about business now. I'm very naive. I'm a tools person. I'm good at fixing things. I'm good with tools. I'm a good problem solver. I'm not a good businessman. I'll be the first person to admit that. I'm not good at doing a deal. I, I always want to do something for the customer. I always want to do that little bit more. I always want to walk away knowing that I've done my best leaving the customer with a little bit more than what they, maybe what they deserve or what they've asked for, which isn't always a good thing, not in my case, because it's given me a lot of pressure. So what does it really mean to be a sole trader or a solo printer? In my mind, it means someone that it's your business whether you're a sole trader or VAT registered limited company, if you're the person, it's your business, it's your idea, um, 
you're the one that's got it off the ground you're the one that struggled at the beginning you're the one paying all the bills now doing the invoicing doing the quoting working late at night you know that that really to me is a, is a sole trader or a solopreneur um at, i suppose maybe maybe there could be two people in a business or something like that, but but basically you're the one with all of the pressure and um some Sometimes when I've said to people, you know, oh, I'm a sole trader, they'll say to me something like, uh, oh, at least you're your own boss. But one thing I, I have, have realised is, is I'm not my own boss. I have around about 200 customers, somewhere between 150 and 200 customers. And if my customer phones me up and says, Eddie, oh, we've got a problem at this place. Can you sort it out? I can't say, oh... I'll sort it out next week, I'm having a day off because they're going to look for someone else. I have to say, yep, yeah, no problem. So for me, that's a problem because I'm on call 24-7, 365 days a year. So, you know, I'm not my own boss, for sure. All, all, all of the winnings are mine, but I'm not my own boss. I have more bosses now than I've ever had before. Um, you know, to get a call at two o'clock in the morning, knowing that I have to be somewhere within two hours. It means, you know, I'm, I'm not my boss. I could be on holiday and I can be getting calls and then I've got to be straight on my phone trying to solve the problem over the phone and things like that. So, you know, I'm sure there are, there are times, you know, if you can organize your work in a way that you can say, oh, I'm going down the calf now, I'm gonna spend two hours in the calf, I'm gonna do a bit of work, and then I'm going to the gym. I'm gonna choose that I'm gonna have six holidays a year. Um, you know, you, you, I wouldn't say you're your own, you, you're your own boss all the time, but there is flexibility to arrange your life as you please. And, you know, that that's, that's where the benefit is. I mean, I can always say no to a customer. I can say, look, no, you're not the right customer for me um, in that respect and not, not have that customer as, as part of my business. And you, you can't just say you're gonna give yourself a pay rise or anything like that because you think you're your own boss. You have to have the money coming in and often you have to work a lot harder because you're trying to make a business, you're trying to build that bank balance up. So there is a lot more pressure being self-employed, sole trader, anything like that, than there is being employed. At least sometimes when you're employed, you can, you can find a balance. If you know that you're paid 1,500 pounds a month, you can organize your life around 1,500 pound a month. Now, for me, I'm in the fire safety business. I have a lot of outgoings and, and things like that. So I, I've got to make sure I do a certain amount of invoicing because I don't know what my outgoings are going to be um, the following month. Um, so in that respect, I never think that I am my own boss. I am far from my own boss. Um, The next thing I want to talk about a little bit is um, is when you decide to be a sole trader. There's there's some things you got to know, but you just you're not gonna know, and and maybe like me, you don't want to know. With me, it's um, all the tax. I have got myself a an accountant. And I've said to the accountant, all I want to know are the numbers. Tell me what I've got to pay. Tell me what I've overpaid. Do not give me any technical information because I know my mindset. Once I start looking into it, I will get into it too much. I will try and find out too much about the tax system that it pulls me away from what I'm good at. So I rely on my accountant and what I would say is, is go spend as much money as you can on an accountant. I don't mean spend loads and have them do less. Get them to be a bigger part of your business. 
because by getting your accountant to be a better part of your business, it will buy you more time to do other things and concentrate on your business and less stress. If that person is looking at your numbers and figures and things like that, that they they can shoot your emails and things like that. So you you know that that's going to create a lot less and. Um, that's something I'm learning at the moment. You know, I've changed the way I operate and I'm not VAT registered, but I've recently just received an email from my accountant saying that I've exceeded my um, turnover. So I should have registered for VAT a while ago and I haven't, so now I'm gonna have a bit of a tax bill to pay and that's gonna come out of my own money. So, you know, these are things to consider because again, this is something that's gonna affect you as a sole trader. There's no one to share this with, it's just you. There's no one else to lay awake at night and think about it with you. It's just you. This, you, you, know, you can talk to some people, you can talk to some friends, you can talk to people, but at the end of the day, it's still you that's got to deal with it. It's still you that's got to put it right. So being a sole trader, any problems, it is down to you to sort it out. Uh, and, and that's sometimes very tough, especially when you're not maybe um, business minded in that way, financially business minded. You don't always know the best solutions and it is very hard to ask for help because sometimes you don't know what the questions are that you should be asking. So what I would say is if you're going to be a self-employed or a sole trader or already are, really think about your accountant and what you can get from them or what they can do for you. Um, another thing is, now if you if you have a partner or a family or something like that and what I have is sometimes, you know, I come home and I'm asked how my day is and all this sort of stuff and I don't really want to talk about the business. You know, I, I tend to come home and I, yeah, not a bad day, it was all right, you know, so-so. And my partner will see me sitting on the sofa. And my family, they see me, they think I'm at home, I'm not at work. But one thing I can say about being a sole trader, or someone who works for themselves, is your body may be at home, but your, your brain is never 100% at home. It's very hard to switch off. I said to my missus, look, I know you can see me here and you, you think I'm not doing anything or I'm just sitting on the sofa. You know, my physical body is at home, but quite often my mind is still at work. My mind is still, it's still going through the emails. It's still problem solving. It's still asking questions. I'm, st I'm still trying to sort something out or I just can't get something off my mind. I'm thinking about how I'm going to deal with it tomorrow or what my response to an email should be. So... If you're one of the lucky people that have got a job where, you know, when you finish for the day, you finished for the day, that's great. But if you're one of the unlucky people that has a lot of pressure or pressure, high pressure job where you've always got to be on the ball, you know, that's a tough, it's a tough place to be. And um, that's something I battle with quite a lot. But, you know, it is hard to switch off. Even when I'm on holiday, it usually takes me two or three days to, to totally switch off and acclimatise. But, um, so to wrap this up, some of the good things about being a sole trader. When it's going well, it's going well. I love it. I enjoy helping people. I enjoy doing that little bit extra. I enjoy getting the recognition. I enjoy the fact that I've created this business. I suppose in a way I've cre I enjoy the fact that I've exceeded the amount of money I thought I would earn and in a weird way I've got I've got to pay extra but you know in a weird way that's a good thing I've exceeded what I thought I was capable of I enjoy the fact that that all my bosses are my bosses I went out and got them they all phoned me up they all asked me for quotes and I won them over over all of the other companies that they could have phoned up. I enjoy the fact that I earn more money now than I used to, and that allows me to provide for my family. And you know, they, they have some nice things. I don't really have anything decent myself. I'm not really interested in much, to be honest with you, but 
it's nice to be able to go out and get stuff for the family and, and and when they say they want to do something I can just say look let's work a time out let's arrange it let's just do it rather than trying to work my life around that like I said before if you're on a monthly wage you get £1,500 a month you work your life around that £1,500 a month well I don't have to do that now I can just maybe knuckle down do a little bit more work a bit more invoicing whatever and 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 that's achievable so as far as being my own boss what I like is is I can push it as far as I want. I can't pull back as far as I want, and you have to remember that, is if you're pushing forward, you're pushing forward all the time, gaining momentum and growing, you can't always pull back from that. You've created something, and I often say, I can't control the monster I've created. So, you know, when you're pushing and pushing and pushing, just remember, you you can stop there and you can keep going, but you can't always pull back unless you're going to start saying no to customers and, and not taking any customers on for a while, or unless you're to the point where you think you can take someone else on and and let them take some of the burden. So really, that's it. That's almost going to wrap it up for this first vlog. I do have a little list of some of the stuff I want to talk about in other vlogs. And again, it's not all positive. It's not all negative, it's a bit of a mix because that's how business goes. Um, I want to talk about wherever you lay your laptop is your office. I'm a little bit different in my field. I am almost a remote worker. I work out of coffee shops and things like that, which is very different for someone in the fire safety industry. So we can talk about working at home, working in places, finding people to collaborate with, do things with. Um, how I run my business, how I started up my business, I want to talk about that. Um, how I'm different, how I'm different to all the other people in my business in my area, uh, we can do that. Be prepared to be busy. I hear a lot about marketing and things like that. If you're in a business night like mine, fire safety, it's a booming business, it's always going to be there. Sometimes you're not always prepared to be busy. The phone keeps ringing, you keep saying yes, you keep saying yes. And this is what I was saying earlier about you're pushing forward. When you reach a point, you've got to be prepared. You can't pull back. It's very difficult. Um, loneliness. Loneliness and being a, being a sole trader. Loneliness is a big part, especially when it's not going well. You can feel very isolated. Um, customer types, we'll talk a bit about customer types. Uh, we'll talk about where I, I have exceeded and where I have failed. So like I say, I'm not a very good business person. To be honest with you, I'm actually not really that interested in business. It's pretty boring, pretty much like the fire safety business that I'm in. It's pretty boring, but it's what I do. And I also have here my questions for you. So what I'm hoping is, that there's some people out there a lot cleverer than me which shouldn't be hard and I'm going to have some questions for you and hopefully some people can get back to me in the comments so that's it for now thanks and see you next time